Please give a warm welcome to Ed Rosenthal. One more? Yeah, yeah. Thing that, that we did, and a lot of the people who were wearing pinstripes. 
stripes would be wearing horizontals now. <laughs> <laughs> So if marijuana teaches you to think outside the box, then thank you. Somebody said they agree. <laughs> I consider that the vast majority. So if somebody, uh, so if you start thinking outside the box, then you're going to change. So you could say marijuana is an agent or catalyst of change. And. Uh, and we need a lot of change. You know, uh, recently I've been annoying uh, uh, people who work with me at uh, Quick Trading with some songs from the 60s. And I'm, not, I'm neither going to sing them or play them for you, but uh, one of them was uh, uh, the Mothers of Inventions uh, called, uh, song called Trouble Coming Every Day. And if you look at that on YouTube and with certain, some of the videos, the song is 50 years old, but it could be taking place. It, it, it could have been taking place this summer, uh, you know, on the streets, except that uh, most of the videos show people rioting, and in this case, it's cops rioting, really. And then a second was his uh, Donovan season of the witch. Uh, I should say the second is really the thugs kill for peace, and in that song from 50 years ago, they say, if you don't kill them, the Russians will. If you don't want America to play second fiddle, kill for peace. And isn't that what's going on right now, 50 years later? Different countries, same war. And then the third was, and this is more applicable directly to what we're doing now and why people are here, it's Donovan's Season of the Witch. And in that he has one line, Beatniks out to make it rich. <laughs> well, hippies, whatever. Come on, recognize yourself. <laughs> so the reason why I got into marijuana is because I hate war. And marijuana is an agent of change. And we have, not only Americans, but the whole world has to change. And we have to get out of war and anti, the war on ourselves and the war on environment. And those two things are really important. And the only way to do it is to change consciousness. Laws don't do it, regulations don't do it. It's a change of consciousness. And marijuana helps you get out of that box so you can actually see reality. And that's why I have Now, uh, you know, I wrote this uh, Marijuana Users uh, Bill of Rights, which you can just go on Google and Google that in and it will come right up. And one of those is that um, and ultimately, that the questions or the, uh, the that Bill of Rights brings to mind some something, and that is if it's a question of freedom or profit, what do you choose? Now, I would say mo many of the people who are now in marijuana have chosen profit. They don't really care about freedom. You know, freedom is, I'm in, let's close the door. And I don't, I don't really think that that's a really good policy for society. I think it's a stupid policy. And I think it's a policy that ultimately brings uh, illegality and illicit activities. Because if you can't get in the door, you're still going to do it. So how are you going to do it? You're going to do it outside. And I hate the term organized, organized crime. As I understand it and as I've seen it, marijuana outside of the system is disorganized crime. <laughs> totally disorganized. <laughs> so if they want to talk about organized crime and heroin or something, or OxyContin with the cartels that are making all these opioids, fine. But leave marijuana out of it. <laughs> Well, we're 
protecting society from organized crime and all that? That's bullshit. They're protecting society from people like us. Ultimately, come on. So, what I think is that, you know, profit's really great, but I'd rather have freedom. If it's a choice of profit or freedom, I'll take freedom every time. should be able to get into it. 
and anybody should be able to get out of it. And anybody should be able to buy, and anybody should be able to sell as long as they have the license and the zoning and everything else. And the state shouldn't be able to say, I like you, but I don't like you. It shouldn't be able to do that. It shouldn't be able to say, oh, we have enough licenses. So you let all the stores that want to open, open, and you know that most of them are going to close, right? And people's are, going, people's, people are going to have their life dreams dashed of owning a store. But that's life. But it's not the state doing it, it's the market doing it. And when the market does it, it's okay for that to happen. For the market to say, I like this store, I don't like that store. But it's not okay for the state to do that to people. Because we're all equal. We should all have equal opportunity. And it shouldn't be who got here first, we're not taking any more applications. Exactly. It's, it's exactly. It's and, and you know, the other thing that I have to say about that is that, you know, you could be a farmer. It, nobody says you have to make a profit. And what I mean by that is farming is farming, and it's a very risky business. And there's, you know, environmental things. There's, there are all kinds of problems. And you know, of course, when you have a great crop, the price goes down because everybody else has. So nobody says farmers have to make a profit, but everybody should be allowed to try to make a profit. In. And if they want to farm, everybody should be allowed to farm as long as they're on proper farming land or in proper area. Anybody disagree with that? Nope. You know, Brandon Kennedy said the same thing. It's, it's, uh, I think that there's, Anybody who's read Marijuana Grows Handbook, and I'm sure everybody here has, if you, know, if you, if you haven't, you should immediately go out and pick up a copy and, and read it. And in it, there's a, there's a page about the tomato model. You know, with tomatoes, there are large tomato growers, there are small tomato growers, there are, there are international companies, national companies, regional companies, local farms, and neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor sales. And everybody's doing okay with tomatoes. And I think it could be like that here. I'm not opposed to giant corporations. I just think that we should allow all corporations and all people to do whatever they want in marijuana as long as they're following the rules and doing it legally. And the rules should allow them to do it. Anybody disagree with that? Well, that's what we have to fight for. And that's what we're not getting. And none of the laws do this. And all these state legislators who are so in favor of capitalism, except when it comes to, to, uh, to marijuana. For instance, in, in California, no um, profit-making dispensaries are allowed. No profit-making dispensaries. But it's such a capitalist state. Could you imagine if they had said, okay, no, you know, computers are so important to society that we shouldn't allow any of these companies to make a profit. Just think how far advanced, much further advanced we would have been with computers now. Like, we would have been up to 128, uh, <laughs> not billion, but millions, you know, whatever. Yes. <laughs> how, so, okay, so, um, so I think that marijuana has to become totally civil, and we have to get the cops out of it, and we have to get the legislators out of it to the extent that they allow a free market. But on the other hand, we also have to make sure that, that people have the ability and the right to use marijuana as a light so that we can change society and become a more loving group of people. Thank you.